Hello and welcome once again to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. Today I would like to go over bones of the skull. And what I am going to do is using this skull and another one, we're going to go through the individual objectives um, that I use in my lab for testing on the bones of the skull. Uh, beginning, we have the frontal bone, makes up your forehead, and it also comes down to the very top part of your eyes. For features, um, this skull has supraorbital notches. You see those two notches right there? And this other skull that I have has supraorbital foramen, a hole right there and right there. So depending on your particular anatomy, you may have supraorbital foramen or you may have supraorbital notches. Continuing on, the temporal bone. This is the right temporal bone, and this is the left temporal bone. Back to the right temporal bone. For features on the temporal bone, this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. In this case, the zygomatic process of the right temporal bone. It's the zygomatic process because it comes up and connects to the zygomatic bone. This area of the zygomatic bone and the temporal bone coming together makes up an arch called the zygomatic arch. And if you're in one of my classes, if I put the sticker over here on this part that is part of the temporal bone, then what I want is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. If I put the sticker over on this side as part of the zygomatic bone, then the answer would be the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. But if I put the suture right over, excuse me, if I put the sticker right over this suture line between the two bones, then I want zygomatic arch. So there's three possibilities in this region. Temporal process of the zygomatic bone, zygomatic process of the temporal bone, or altogether zygomatic arch. Moving on with the temporal bone. This is the external auditory meatus. This is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And this little thing sticking out inside here, if you can see it, that's the styloid process. It's a piece of bone that sticks right down. And most, a lot of skulls, those are missing. Let's see if we can find one on this other skull. And I can't. The styloid process has been broken off. Um, the plastic skulls that we have have it really good. Let's go over those parts again on this temporal bone on this other skull. There's the temporal bone. There's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. There's the external auditory meatus or acoustic meatus. Um, there's the mastoid process. And it's missing a styloid process. All right. So that was temporal bone. The next bone on my list is the parietal bones. This is the right parietal bone. And over here is the left parietal bone. The parietal bones are just behind the frontal bone. And there's two of them, a left and a right. From parietal bone, we go to occipital bone. That's on the back of the skull. So I'm going to turn it so we can see the back and the bottom. This is the occipital bone. And for the occipital bone, you need to know occipital condyles. The occipital bone comes all the way down here and wraps around this big hole. In fact, this hole is in the occipital bone. This hole is called the foramen magnum. And on either side of it, you have the occipital condyles. The occipital condyles articulate with cervical vertebrae number one the atlas. So this is where your skull hooks up with your spinal, with your spinal column. Um, and the foramen magnum is where your spinal cord comes through. The sphenoid bone. I'm going to open up this skull. I'm going to take off these two hooks so that we can look inside. <coughs> 
looking down into the skull, the sphenoid bone, if you can see the sutures, they're along up in here and go all the way down and around. The sphenoid bone has kind of a butter, butterfly shape to it because of that. It rests on the base of the skull. You can see the sphenoid bone on the outside here in front of the temporal bone and between the temporal bone and the frontal bone. So it reaches to the outside right in this basic area from the inside to right here. The feature on the sphenoid bone that you have to be able to recognize is this little dip in the sphenoid bone. It's called the cella tersica or the Turk's saddle, cella tersica. Your pituitary gland rests down in the cella tersica. Okay, the next bone on my list is the ethmoid bone. And the ethmoid bone has a pretty small surface inside of the skull here. It's right in this neighborhood. In fact, um, if you can see this little, almost looks like a shark's fin sticking up inside. That's part of the ethmoid bone. It's called the Cristagalli. And on either side of the Cristagalli, we have the cribiform plate on this side and this side. You should be able to see little tiny holes in that cribiform plate. That is where neurons go through in order to service your sense of smell. Cranial nerve number one, both right and left, sits inside of this area of the ethmoid bone. You can also see the ethmoid bone a bit inside the eye socket. This is the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone inside of the eye socket. And if you look close, you can see the sutures. I'm not sure if you'll see it on the video, so make sure you're looking at a good skull when you get into the lab. Orbital plate of the ethmoid bone. Um, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone is deep inside. Um, and it's actually on my list of objectives, but I won't test you on it because we can't get to it. So if you have a list of objectives in front of you, you can cross off the um, perpendicular plate. The vomer bone is inside of the nasal cavity, and it's this large piece of bone in the center that makes up a large part of the nasal septum, the vomer. The zygomatic bone, this is the left zygomatic bone, and this is the right zygomatic bone. And again, I already covered this process, but the only process, the only feature you need to know for the zygomatic bone is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone over here, where it connects up with the temporal bone. The maxilla, this is the maxilla. It's a bone that your top teeth are embedded into. And there's actually a right maxilla and a left maxilla. And for the maxilla, you need the palatine process. If I turn the skull over so that you're looking inside of the mouth, this front part here of the roof of your mouth is the palatine process of the maxilla. The palatine bones are back here. There's a suture right here. Right there is the suture. Sorry, I had to look at it. And the palatine bones are right behind that suture. The lacrimal bone. The lacrimal bone you can find inside the eye socket on the medial side. It's right here. That's the lacrimal bone. For features on the lacrimal bone, there's a lacrimal fossa. If you can see, there's a little indentation inside of the lacrimal bone here. And then there's the lacrimal foramen, which is the hole, if you can see it, that goes straight down. Whoops. I'll put the little straw in it. That hole goes straight down into the nasal cavity. You can see the straw in the nasal cavity now. So that's the lacrimal foramen.
When I ask about this on an exam, the skull will look something like this with a straw stuck through that foramen. And the question will be, what is the pointer stuck through? And in this case, it's the lacrimal foramen. So lacrimal bone, lacrimal fossa, and lacrimal foramen. After lacrimal bone, we have nasal bones. This is the left nasal bone, and this is the right nasal bone. They're relatively small bones. The mandible is down here. It's the part that you chew with or that moves when you talk or chew. Um, and you have two mental foramen. There's a mental foramen on this side of the mandible, and there's a mental foramen on this side. Remember when we studied, lo studied long bones? These are nutrient foramen. The sutures of the skull. This is the coronal suture. It separates the frontal bone from the parietal bones. So that's coronal suture. This is the sagittal suture. It separates the left and right parietal bones. So that's the sagittal suture. And then in the back of the skull, you have the lambdoidal suture going across the back. I always think it's kind of neat to look at these sutures and the way they kind of weave around through each other when the bones fuse together when you grew up. The squamosal suture is here between the temporal bones and the parietal bone. This would be the left squamosal suture. And this would be the right squamosal suture. So the squamosal is the only one that you have a, a right and left to. And those are the sutures of the skull. OK, here we have the fetal skull. For the fetal skull, you need to know the anterior fontanelle. That is this area up here. Makes up the soft spot in the top of the baby's head. The sphenoidal fontanelle is up here. The posterior fontanelle is back here on the back of the skull. This is the occipital bone, and these are the parietal bones. That's the posterior fontanelle. And then the mastoid fontanelle is here, below the parietal bone, and between, basically between the three, the parietal bone, the occipital bone, and the temporal bone. Notice that the fetal bone has all the major bones, mandible, maxilla, frontal bone, except because the suture hasn't completely formed, you have kind of a right and left of the frontal. You have parietal bones, both the right parietal bone and the left parietal bone. You have the occipital bone. So you should also know the major bones on the fetal skull. I think that concludes all of the skull bones that you need for your objectives. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to call or email me. Thank you for watching.